Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Moving on to another question. We have to find T subscript alpha or plus or minus T alpha over two in each of these scenarios here. So number one, we got the probability when the T distribution is less than or equal to T subscript alpha, and that probability is equal to 0.9, and the degrees of freedom is equal to 11. So we're looking for this T subscript alpha here. Now, notice that this here is gonna be a one-tailed probability. So if we draw this out, we know zero is in the middle. What they're saying is the probability or the area under the curve to the left of a certain value, T alpha, so all of this over here is equal to 0 0.9. So if that's the probability there, then we know that alpha, it's basically gonna equal one minus 0 0.9, which is 0 0.1. So they're asking basically for T of 0 0.1 over here. So how can we find that? Well, two different ways. We could use the table or we can use the calculator. So let's start off with the calculator. So you would go to the main menu, you would hit stat, then you would hit F5, which is going to say distribution, then F2 for the T distribution, and then F3. Because we're gonna be inversing, we're going to be finding a T value, and you're gonna to get to this input screen over here. Now the data is gonna be variable, and this area over here, when you're dealing with a T distribution, the area that you input here is always to the right of the t value that you're finding. So we're not going to input 0 0.9. We have to input this area over here, right? And if this area to the left of t uh, 0.1 is 0.9, then we know this area here, the remaining is 0 0.1. So that's what we input over here. So it's a little bit different than the z distribution because the z distribution you input the area to the left of the z value you're finding here you input the uh, area to the right of the t value that you are finding and then degrees of freedom were given that to be 11 and when you run that in the calculator when you execute it you would end up getting 1.363 for that t value so that there is the answer so here that is 1.363. So that is T alpha for number one. And if you look that up in the table, you would also get that answer. So you'd look up on the left side, the degrees of freedom, you'd look for 11. And then the column, you would look for T of 0 0.1, as that's that T value there. And with the degrees of freedom of 11 and T 0 0.1, you would see that it's 1.363 in the table as well. All right, so that's how you do the first one. Now, what about the second one? So let's erase this here. We're told that the probability of the T distribution to where T is greater than or equal to T alpha is equal to 0 0.01 and the sample size is 16. So notice instead of the degrees of freedom, they give us the sample size now. So if we draw this out, this is a one-tailed probability as well, but notice that this probability is to the right of T alpha, right? T is greater than T alpha. So that's gonna be over here. So that means that this probability is 0.01 which means that the alpha is 0 0.01, like that. And the degrees of freedom, notice we're gonna have to input a degrees of freedom over here. It's equal to what? N minus one. So if we know the N value is 16, then we know the degrees of freedom is gonna be 15, right? 16 minus one is 15. So the area we would input here is 0 0.01, and the degrees of freedom would be 15. And when you run that in the calculator, you'd end up getting 2.602. So that's that T value right there. 
right? So that is the answer to the number two. That's what T subscript alpha is going to be. And if you look that up in the table, degrees of freedom would be 15. And um, you would look up T 0.01, as that's the area to the right of the T value. You would see that that is the uh, T value 2.602. Okay, moving on to number three. Number three is a little unique because we're not dealing with a one-tailed probability anymore. Notice now that we're dealing with negative t alpha over two and positive t alpha over two. And they're saying the probability between those two values is equal to 0 0.95. So if we show that on a graph, we got zero in the middle, t alpha over two is over here, and then t or negative t alpha over two is here. And they're saying the probability between these two values is uh, 0 0.95, like that. So if that's the probability, then we know that alpha is equal to what? it's equal to 1 minus 0.95, which is 0 0.05. So why do they have an alpha over 2? Well, this 0 0.05 is distributed equally between this area over here and this area over here. So that means that this area here is going to be 0 0.025, right? 0 0.05 divided by 2. That's where that alpha over 2 is coming from. And then this is going to be 0 0.025 as well. So this t value here is t of 0 0.025, right? Because that's the area to the right of that t value right there, right? So if we could find what this is, then this value is just going to be the negative value of that. So what we can do is we could plug in 0 0.025 here, right? The area to the right of that T value. And then the degrees of freedom, notice we're given the sample size again, 19. Degrees of freedom would be 19 minus 1, which would be 18. When you run that in the calculator, you'd end up getting 2.101. And so that's the T value over here. This is 2.101. And then this T value, since this is symmetrical, would be negative 2.101. Right, so the probability in between both of these T values here is 0.95 when the degrees of freedom is 18. Right, so that's when you see something like this, then you know you're dealing with the probability in between these two t values. So plus or minus 2.101 is the answer to number three. That's what we are looking for over here, right? What about number four? Number four is unique as well. We got the probability that t is less than or equal to negative t alpha over two or the probability that t is greater than or equal to t alpha over 2 is 0 0.01. Degrees of freedom is 13. So the way that looks notice that this and this are different because in this one this is t alpha over 2 this is negative t alpha over 2 What we are given in this question is the probability over here and over here. Notice to the left of negative t alpha over 2 and then to the right of t alpha over 2. So both of these areas here have to equal 0 0.01. And so if we take 0 0.01 and divide it by 2, then we know that this area is going to be 0 0.005. This area is going to be 0 0.005 as well. All right, so it's still a two-tailed probability, but just the uh, format that it's given in is different. In this one, we were given the probability in between. In this one, we're given the probability outside. So 
to find these values, um, we could find this value first. So we could just plug in the area to the right of that T value, which is 0 0.005, right? Half of 0 0.01 degrees of freedom is given as 13. And so when you run that in the calculator, you'd end up getting 3.012. So that is the T value over here, 3.012. And then that's the T value over here. It's just the negative value of that because it's symmetrical. All right, um, and that's the answer. So that's the plus or minus T alpha over two. And you could get those values from the T table as well. If you look up degrees of freedom of 13, and then you look up T of 0 0.005, right? Cause that's what that T value is gonna be. You would get 3.012. And then the negative value is just the negative that you found. Right, because you could only find the positive values, at least in the T table that I provide in the link below. But to get that negative value, you would just uh, add a negative in front. So that is the answer to number four. And then finally, number five, it's a little bit unique. We're told that uh, we have to find both T alpha and plus or minus T alpha over two where one minus alpha is 0.95 and the degrees of freedom is 14. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna solve for this alpha here. So I'm gonna bring the negative alpha over to make it positive. Then I'm gonna bring the 0.95 to the left side. So we have one minus 0.95 equals alpha. And so alpha is basically 0 0.05. And we have to find both T alpha so T alpha is going to be T of 0 0.05, which is going to be over here. Right, so that means that this area is 0 0.05 and we're told the degrees of freedom is 14. So the area to the right is 0 0.05. And then the degrees of freedom, it's given as 14. So we plug in 14 over here. And then when we execute that, basically T of 0 0.05 would be 1.761. So that would be 1.761 over here. You can look at that up in, in uh, the table as well. Degrees of freedom 14, you would look for T of 0 0.05 and 1.761 would be that T value. So that's the answer to the first part. What about the second part? We're also told to find plus or minus T alpha over two. Well, if alpha is 0 0.05, alpha over two is gonna be 0 0.025. So the diagram is gonna look a little bit different. We're gonna have two T values to work with. So we're gonna have T of 0 0.025 and then negative T of 0 0.025. Right there and right there. Right, so it's like the 0 0.05 is split up between these two. So this area here is 0 0.025. This area is 0 0.025 as well. So now to find this, the area to the right, 0 0.025. And when you run that in the calculator, you would end up getting 2.145. So this value here, is uh, positive 2.145. This value here, negative 2.145, right? So that's the answer to the second part of the question, right? So these can get pretty tricky. The best thing to do when you get something like this is draw it out visually first. And then you'll know what areas you're looking for, what T values you're looking for, whether you're looking for two T values or one T value, like over here and over here, and over here in the fifth question. And then you know what to input in the calculator. Remember when you're finding a T value, when you're using the T distribution, the inverse T function, this area that you input is always to the right of a T value. Then you input the degrees of freedom and you get the T value you're looking for.